Hey, Composite Gloves here, and today we're going to be talking about transients. I'm wearing a hat, and let's jump into this. So, right here, I've got some sounds. You're going to hear a lot about transients. A transient is a moment of excitement. In audio, we use it to define a peak in audio, something that's like, whoa, that was exciting. And these are usually created by drum hits is the most commonly found place of these. So you see, it's like for this little itsy bitsy amount of time, it's like, bam, like very little is going on and then boom, like a whole bunch of audio and then it trails off again. And so we have these transients. They're also commonly associated with what's called the chiff or the beginning moments of a sample. So if I was playing a flute, me blowing into the flute would be very hard to synthesize. It's very specialized the way that the whole process goes down it's very sophisticated because you know i'm generating air of this particular type of stream it's going into the flute and so that initial sound is really hard to create it's called the chiff and it would also be considered the transient of the flute because so there was no sound and suddenly bang sound then the tone falling would actually be much easier the periodic waveform would be generated that would be much easier to synthesize that's not the transient so when we affect our transients, we change the character of our track. And you might be going, well, why is that? Well, in the critical listening series, we talk about how our ears cannot, if something's really, really fast, as far as the sound is concerned, we don't actually get a very good read on how loud it is. Instead, when the loudness increases or decreases, we change the character of the sound, the sonic quality that that sound has. And we can get in all sorts of other things that go on here, but the, what it comes down to is our ears are excellent at detecting the beginnings of sounds like this. And we've been highly specialized, we're really great at tearing apart, oh my gosh, at tearing apart that initial transient and deciding what it is and what it sounds like. Like when you mess with these things, they can change a lot. So in a mix I have here, let's go ahead and give you some quick examples and then we'll, we'll bring up some further things that, cause this becomes really important. It's very hotly debated on like how you should treat these things. Not hotly debated, but there's a huge number of ways to treat your transients and preserve them in a beneficial way for what you want. So let's go ahead. I have an unprocessed drum loop. It sounds like this. And you can see here we have our trans. It's very easily identifiable. One thing that we probably don't want to do is this. Now, we haven't talked about the types of processing that I'm going to be doing here, but we will cover them later on in this series. But I've done here is I've highly compressed it. And what happens is, on average, our volume is now super loud. Our transients are far less impactful. We really negatively impacted them. A couple other things can also happen when you do this. So you see, like, beforehand, this was very soft. This is not very soft. This is much louder. As a result, we lose a lot of that impact and that initial punch. So if we listen to the first one, it's a lot more tight, sort of groovy if we listen to the second one. Now, this isn't necessarily bad, but if your final product sounds like that, you're probably not what you want, especially if you were to turn this thing up. If you turn it up, it begins to sound more and more like noise. It loses a groove. It's just not that great. If we turn this one up, we'll get more groove because the, the differences will still be there. We'll still be able to easily tell where things are. And if anything, the Fletcher Munson curves will come into play a little bit more apparently in a to many people will actually sound better. But when people are mastering for loudness, one of the things we do is we crush our tracks. We try to bring up the average loudness. And the way you do this can be very important because you see, we get a sound like this and you might want to sound closer to this. It's a lot more punchy and tight. So people actually take away the impact of their track when they do crap like this quite often. And so you want to be careful about that when you're handing it off to a mastering engineer. How do they do their job? What are some examples of their work? One of the things you're going to want to listen for is their transients. Do they maintain the transients or does it sound like one big like wash of not very impactful stuff? Like, is that something that's important to you or do you want to sound like this? Because this isn't bad. It's just a different sound. Let's look at some in-between things that I have going on here. So here I've got one that's gotten, I've, that's gotten, I'm using something called the Transient Master by Native Instruments. I'm not sure if this is a transient designer. What it does is it, it uses, it's sort of like a compressor, but it can dynamically detect where transients are and either affect the transient or affect the stuff after the transient. So sort of a really fancy compressor. And what it does here is I took it and I turned up the sustain. So I said, hey, leave the transients more or less where they are. I want to mess with the sustain. So bring up the stuff afterwards. So it's kind of like increasing the RMS. But you can see here it's not quite as messy as this one. This one has a lot of noise. This one has far less. So let's go ahead and do a couple ABs. Here's that one. 
versus this one. So there's, we're probably not gonna play that one again. So here's this one. And here's the original. So they all invite different levels of groove, different emphasis. As you see the upbeats on this one, the offbeats are emphasized in very different ways than they are in these two. And you can begin to blend these. So you can maybe turn this one down, but bring it up a little bit so you get a more consistent level, but you still maintain your transients to a degree. We'll get into all sorts of parallel processing as we go. So that's like, those are some options you have. And you want to make sure that you are able to preserve these transients because we want to keep the impact in our track. When things start to get really loud all the time, you increase your, what's called your RMS value. So RMS stands for root mean square. It gives us a meaningful average. And we've already talked about this a little bit. And we want to just be careful about bringing it up too much because if it's up all the time like that, Sometimes it could sound really cool and getting it, you can achieve a higher RMS and still have impact. It's just, there's a real trick to it and just making, and there's not like one trick. It's all dependent on all these moves you make beforehand. So it starts with moves like these when you're treating your drums. So that's where now this last one, I use a transient master. Instead of increasing the sustain, I increase the attack. So you see the attacks have been accentuated or I'm not sure if that's the best word. They've been emphasized. They've been brought up. So maybe we'll take that and blend it with a mix of this and get something that's sort of in between. But our original, our, our now emphasized attacks, same attack, but with an emphasized after the transient. And then our last one. And getting these things to all work in a mix can be really important because maybe your kick drum's losing its ground because of masking. At this point, I'd also like to say, please go to the Critical Listening series and look up the video on mas not mastering, masking. Look up the one on masking. There's two big types of masking and you should really know them when you're messing with stuff like this. They hugely impact your sound. And over there, I talk about them, what they do and what they sound like. And it's very important as you get mixing to understand how masking works. So... That's that. So when the, I guess the big takeaway for this is be aware of your transients. There's a variety of ways to save your transients, to preserve your transients. There's a variety of processing. Some will take away the power your transients have. Compressors, a lot of new people will use compression and kill their transients. And there's ways of compressing and getting your average volume to go up and still keep your transients there for the most part. A lot of it, though, remember, is just setting that darn level knob exactly where you want relative to everything else. It's a lot of listening. And just going back and forth and saying, how about this? Now I'm going to add in these three elements. Does my dr kick drum still sound good? And you do all these things. You go back and forth and you may try a variety of these things to get different parts of the sound to come out. Maybe you only want this to come out because you've got other groovy lines that are going on and you want those to fill in these spaces here. You don't want your drums to fill in the whole space here. Maybe you want your drums to come up a little bit to help with the masking issue. You know, there's just loads and loads of different things you can do. If you have any questions, let me know. Additional opinions, advice, things you would tell people that you wish you had known. Go ahead, drop those down below too. Very helpful for just a community. Subscribe. I do private lessons if you are interested and have a blessed day.